We just have to think 14 moves ahead, that's all. So you've got yourself the Pixel Watch, the first of its name, and it's equipped with a ton of googliness, and it's also certainly a chip off the old Fitbit block, and maybe, just maybe, you'll get a bit fit if you use it right from day one. And that is exactly why I'm making this video for you. So let's get straight into the first 15 things to do on day one so that you can get the most out of your Google Pixel Watch. And in doing these 15 things, your Google Pixel Watch will be getting the most out of you. Now, time is always of the essence and so is battery life on this watch. And one surefire way to run the battery into the ground fast is to let every single app on your phone push notifications to the watch. Not only is this a massive power drain, it's also bloody annoying. And I found this out the hard way so you don't have to. And I do recommend if you guys are gonna follow along with this video and make the changes as we go through, add the Fitbit widget to the home screen. That's this little flame one here that looks pretty awesome. And also add the watch shortcut because we're gonna be using this a lot throughout the video. Now for tip one, we're gonna go straight into the watch app on the phone. You can do this kind of stuff on the device, but why work on a small screen like that when you've got a big screen like this? Go to notifications. Here we wanna look at the from phone apps and reveal all of these. Now turn them all off and start with a clean sheet. And as you go back through this list one by one, if the level of importance isn't an eight or a nine or a 10, then you should probably leave that app off. And if you do this properly on day one, it's a win-win, less distractions and less power drain. So I know this one is probably what most people wanna do straight away and it probably should have been the first tip, but the first tip in this video was very important that's why it was number one. Anyway, back into the watch app and into watch faces. Now to keep it simple and straight to the point, my advice is that you set up three different watch faces, one for business, one for leisure, and one for action. And you can of course have a ton more if you want, but ain't nobody got time for that in this video. And once again, you can do this on the watch, but it's far easier here on the phone. So to add a new watch face, just go to add. You'll have the full library from Google. You can do third party watch faces, but I do recommend use the Google ones first and then play around with those other ones later on. Now, each one of the watch faces is very customizable. Again, you can do this on the watch, but it's easier here on the phone. For example, if I go to edit here, you'll see I can customize the color of the text to whatever I want it to be. I can change the text type from thin to bold. We can even hide the second hand. And on some watches, you can even change them to analog. But this is what I really want to show you is the complications. So the complications are customizable. So you want to set these up, particularly on the watch face you're using fitness tracking. And the great thing about this is some of these complications are interactive widgets on the screen. For example, let's say you want to open Strava from the watch face screen instead of having to find it. You can do that here. Just add the launch Strava widget to the watch face. Now, when we switch to that watch face by holding down on the home screen and swiping across, if we tap the Strava widget, which is the top one, it automatically launches Strava. And of course, once you're signed in and all that, it will launch straight into the app. And just for the record, this is definitely my favorite watch face at the moment. It's the concentric one. You can customize the colors here. I just like how the second dial kind of spins, but the rest of the watch stays static. Anyway, next tip. So if you wanna save time in the future, then do this right now in the Google Pixel Watch app, go to tiles. Here you can manage the tiles, but what I want you to pay close attention to is the first and last tiles, as these two are the most important ones. You can add tiles by hitting the add button, and if anything here stands out as very important to you, then definitely add it. For example, this could be useful, ECG launch. So you can add and delete whatever you like and use the two lines at the sides to organize the tiles properly in a way that makes sense for you. Now, what I'm gonna do is drag the sleep tile to the top. Because I'm always up so late working on these videos, I don't get much sleep and I need to work on that. And then if we scroll to the last one, I'm gonna bring the exercise quick launch down to the end. Because that's kind of what I do. I do quick high intensity runs back and forth from the computer to the fridge throughout the day. I guess you could call it kind of interval training. Okay, so let me show you why the first and last tiles are the most important. When you swipe left, we get straight to the exercise tile. When I swipe right, I get straight to the sleep tile. And as you can see, last night, that's how much sleep I got. And that's real right there. I was literally up in the middle of the night writing this script for this video. And before I knew it, the alarm was going off. So this tip is really about efficiency. So make sure you do it properly on day one and then you're sorted going forward. Okay, one thing I recommend you do if you haven't done it already is get an app. And the app I'm about to show you isn't pre-installed on the Pixel devices by default. And it's quite likely by the time you realize that you needed it, it'll be too late. 
So thank me later. So you could do this on the watch, but once again, why do that when you've got the big screen right here? So scroll down to the Play Store within the Google Watch app, and then you'll have all of the apps available for the watch. And you have an essential app section here. If you scroll down, you'll see top three apps. And then within this menu, you can filter to paid and top grossing apps if you feel like spending some money. And if you do feel like spending some money, see that thanks button below this video. If you test that, there's a very good chance you'll be the first person on the planet Earth to have done it. So test it out and let me know what happens. But anyway, what you need to do here is go to Google, find my device. If it's not already installed, install it straight away. This app will allow you to track down your Pixel Watch and other Google devices if they go missing. And with the watch, you can actually even make it chime if you think you've lost it down the side of a sofa or something. And if you've left it at the gym, you can remote lock it and even add a message with your phone number. And then you can hope and pray that the person who finds it isn't a c Because if they are, there's no cure for that. And then if worst comes to worst, you do have the erase device option that will then delete all of your personal data from the watch. So you probably noticed when you set the watch up for the first time, it pre-installed all of the stock apps and then it gave you the option to install third party apps. And what I wanna show you is how to install apps the correct way on the watch. So you can do it here on the Play Store. You can go to all the different categories that they have and you've got the search option here as well. You can search with your voice or with the keyboard. The keyboard does support swipe gestures as well. But again, why do that if you have your phone right next to you? It's far easier here. Now, just for example, let's say I want to install an app on the watch, but not on the phone. You have to keep an eye out for something. So let's say City Mapper, for example. See the little drop down arrow on the right side of the app? If you go to that, you'll get two tick boxes. Now, if you just want it on the watch and not on the phone, just untick this device and leave Pixel Watch tick. That way, when we install it, it's now only gonna install it here. So just be aware of that drop down menu. And if you don't see the drop down menu next to an app, that means that the app isn't supported on the watch. Okay, so this one might be patched in the future, but as of day one, it seems as though the watch apps do not auto update by default. And it's worth checking your watch to see if this is the case. And even if they do patch this in the future, this tip is a good one to know. So here's how to update all of the watch apps manually here on the watch. So push the crown to get all of your apps. Go to the Play Store. Here, you wanna scroll down to where it says Manage Apps. Open that and you'll see Update All. I did notice when I started using this watch on the first day, a bunch of apps weren't working properly. But once you do this, you'll notice the performance of the watch improves a lot. And a word of advice, if you're gonna do this and you've got a bunch of updates like I do, it's a good idea to only do it whilst charging as this amount of updates is gonna nuke the battery. So you already know, you can ask your Google AI anything just by speaking the wake words to summon it. But did you know that by default, the responses on the watch are not personalized for you? And the reality is the watch is kind of a bionic extension of you in a way, so it should be personal. And here's how to make it more personal. So on your device, go to the watch app once again. This time we're going to the Google menu. And here where it says Google Assistant, open that. And you'll notice straight away, personal results are not ticked. And now the AI assistant will have more information about your calendar, your daily life, and other important things that matter to you. For example, your contacts. So I do recommend you switch this on on day one. Okay, Fitbit, Google own it. And there's a lot of premium features to test out and it's worth getting the six month free trial on the go. And it's also worth using the last tip to summon your AI and ask it to set a reminder on your calendar to possibly cancel the service five months and three weeks from now. But I've got a feeling once you start using this, you probably won't want to do that. But what I wanna show you is this, the Fitbit home screen is actually a bunch of widgets and you can actually customize the layout of these widgets just by holding your finger down and dragging things around. So what I recommend you do on day one is go to the Fitbit home screen, go to edit at the top, go through the list, delete everything that's irrelevant. If you scroll away to the bottom, there'll be extra things you can add like menstrual cycle and blood glucose if that's important to you. You can add those and position them within the list in order of importance. If you put in the work now, it's gonna make life easier for you later when it comes to analyzing your stats. So I've discovered something within the Fitbit app that wasn't on by default within the settings, and I do recommend you change this straight away. If you go to the Fitbit app, 
go to your profile icon in the top left corner. You can actually add a photo to that if you want to. Go to app settings, and then here you'll see both of these are switched off. Automatic time zone and automatic location. I recommend you switch those on and it's pretty obvious why you'd wanna do that. I don't really think I need to explain it. Now, do you know what they call a quarter pounder with cheese in Paris? They call it a Royale with cheese because they use the metric system and the Fitbit app kind of defaults to the American style of things, which is fine, but not if you're in Paris or England or anywhere else that uses different units. So it's important to set up your Fitbit app for your part of the planet. To do this, go to your profile, again, top left corner, again, go to the app settings, and then here at the bottom, you'll see units. So you can change it from feet and miles to kilometers and centimeters, weight, to pounds or stone, and we still use stone here in England, which is very old fashioned. Water from ounces to milliliters, even energy, temperature, and blood glucose levels. And I do believe there's not many people that would tell you about this one, so I'm glad you found this video. So I made a first 25 things to do video on the Google Pixel 7 Pro, and I'm kicking myself because I didn't add this into that video, but I am now redeemed by the fact that I can mention it here in this video for you guys. On your phone, go to the Google Play Store and search for this, Google Personal Safety. Open this app. Then in here, you can turn on crash detection, which is on the phone only, not on the watch. What you really need to do here is set up your emergency contacts. Now, I've already done mine. There was a tile here that said, set up emergency contacts. And you can go into the settings here and do it manually as well. And the reason that I'm telling you about this now is because the watch has an emergency feature built in. If you tap the crown five times, You'll see it starts to You'll see it starts to do an emergency dial. It's kind of like sending an SOS to the world, like a message in a bottle. But in reality, it's more like a phone call and a text message. But trust me, you should do this. Even if you're hard as nails, everybody needs a little help sometimes. And if you wouldn't mind helping me out with a little thumbs up or subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. And just while we're here, I just want to highlight another feature that should have been in that 25 first things to do video. Is this the safety check? This is an awesome feature. So you can set it up that it asks you to interact with the phone every five minutes, for example, to make sure you're all right. And if you don't interact with the phone in that five minutes, then it emergency dials your contacts. That's a cool little feature there that I wish I had mentioned about this phone. But anyway, on to the next one. Okay, so the battery life on the Pixel Watch is a little bit of a touchy subject, especially if you wanna work all day and sleep all night without taking it off. So I've put together a few tips and tricks that could help you with that. On the watch, swipe down from the top to go to your quick settings menu. Here, we're going to the settings, which is this one. Looks like a gear. Now we're gonna choose display and we're scrolling all the way to the bottom where it says always on display. And I'm gonna switch it off. Now, if you do this instantly, the display will be drawing far less precious power because if you leave it on, the screen is being lit 24 hours a day and that is a recipe for faster power drain. But it does look pretty cool. So the choice is ultimately up to you. And here's another good way to save a little bit of power and that's to go back into the display settings again. Scroll down to where you see sunlight boost. Now turn this off because if you happen to live somewhere sunny, whenever the sun is beaming directly on the watch, it's gonna boost the screen power output at the same time as brightening up the display. So in a way, if you live somewhere where the sun's always shining, your watch is probably gonna die faster than mine because I live in rainy old England and we don't get much sun. And if you wanna take this a step further, if you go back and go to adjust brightness, you can actually drop the brightness down and turn off adaptive brightness. And actually you'll find the lowest brightness setting isn't that much lower than the middle setting which it defaults to. And if you're happy with the screen brightness and you don't need the always on display, then more power to you. And here is another power saving tip. Again, scroll down from the top, go to your settings, go to display. Here where it says screen timeout, tap on that. You should definitely not have this on 30 seconds. I set it to 30 seconds whilst I'm filming this video. By default, it's on 15. Now, if you reduce this to 10 seconds, in theory, you'll be reducing the power drain by 33%, in theory. But depending on how you use the watch, it could be detrimental to you if you end up having to wake the display twice as much as you normally would with the 15 second timeout. So think about this one, test it out and see if you like it. And here is the last battery saving tip for you. Let's say you're drinking a coffee in the morning every day and you drink coffee with the same hand you wear the watch on. Well, the watch might think you're trying to read the time. 
in which case it's going to be lighting up constantly for no reason. And I personally drink a lot of coffee because you've seen how much sleep I get. It's the only way I can keep my eyes open. So with this in mind, you might want to do this to make your Pixel Watch extra efficient when it comes to battery. Go into the Watch app, scroll down to Watch Preferences and go to Display and Gestures and turn off Tilt to Wake. Yes, this is a usability sacrifice, but if you can manage without the tilt feature, you will certainly save power, which once again means more power to you. Okay, so you made it all the way to tip 15 and I have saved some bonus content as a reward for you making it this far. So I'm sure you already know, you've heard about this. If you go into the Watch app and you go to Google services here, you have the Google Wallet. Here you can add a bank card that allows you to pay with the NFC on the watch. And once you've set this up, a quick little double tap on the crown quick launches the wallet app. So next time you're at the cash register, all you need to do is double tap the crown, flash the watch, and the cashier, when they see you paying with your Pixel watch, they'll know what time it is. And if you're not using this feature, it's time to step into the future and set this up. And if you're not sure about Google Wallet, what it is, what it does, and all this stuff, you can hold the side key here at the top and ask Google, what is Google Pay. According to Wikipedia, Google Pay is a mobile payment service developed by Google to power in-app, online, and in-person contactless purchases on mobile devices, enabling users to make payments with Android phones, tablets, or watches. And here's something else I recommend you do within the Fitbit app. So tap on the shortcut here. As you can see, I've got my sleep tracking at the top. Go into that, go to the settings, and then here, set a sleep goal. So the amount of sleep that you think you need and then set a target for when you want to go to bed and wake up. And then what you can do is set reminders for the days of the week that you want to hit these goals. And that way your watch will now prompt you to get ready for bed in good time. And I have a bunch more tips and tricks for you guys up my sleeve. But now if you have a Pixel phone and you wanna maximize this potential, I collected 25 of the best tips and tricks and hidden features for you guys. That thumbnail's on screen right now. I'll see you in the next one. So don't be late.